Well, I'm Eli Froge from Petersburg, Indiana. Uh, where I started out doing this when I was young. We are around 10, 11 years old, where one of my father's co-workers uh, introduced me into the sport. Uh, his name's Martin Pritchett. He's, he's a character. He's a character. Good dude. My name's Jason Jacobs. I'm from Covington, Indiana. Uh, started getting involved in uh, living history in around 2006. That's about it? That's about it, yeah. Did he drag you out, or what got you interested? Uh, no, I mean, I always had a love for history, and uh, going back into our family tree, there was, a, there was a, like a fifth great-grandfather by the name of John Lamb. He was the second in command of the Continental Artillery at the Battle of Yorktown. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, being in the military, I was in the Army for 22 and a half years, and always liked the history side of things, you yeah. know. And, uh, this just really sparked my interest of the, you know, the, that time period, uh, you know, breaking yeah. away from England and forming, yeah. a, forming a new nation, you know. And it's a really exciting time. It had time. to be exciting time, yeah. exactly. And just the men that did that, you know, Ben Franklin and Washington and those guys. Yeah, you know, it was a real caliber. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And knowing what they were doing and, and yeah. you know, forging ahead with it. And, took a lot. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I like about, um, on my end, like the traditional craft side of things is trying to make things, knowing how hard it was oh, for them to definitely. make things. You know, if it's hot, we can turn on the air conditioning and, and right. forge a bunch of stuff, and it makes it really <laughs> right. easy. But then you yeah. think about guys dinking around oh, in yeah. the woods trying to make yeah. this stuff happen. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Most definitely. And what are, like, where we was talking about this canoe, I mean, we, one of the places we camped on our trip was right at the Embrace, yeah. Embarrass River. I don't know how you pronounce it, but the Southerners pronounce it different than we did. But we camped right where George Rogers Clark crossed that river, oh, wow. forging into Vincennes. And to think that they stopped and made canoes right there in the middle of the woods and whatever they had to do at that time, mm -hmm. it was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah. you're talking about just doing things old school. Yeah, that's... you get real connected to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. and that's what I thought was neat when I saw you guys online talking about this trip and gearing up for it because mm -hmm. you guys did this all, period. Yes. I mean, it's all correct yes. right. for, historically. Yeah. I, I wanted to sit yeah. down and talk with you because I think that's just really neat. Yeah. Well, that's what, I mean, we, people say, oh, you're a reenactor. Well, we don't consider ourselves reenactors. We're living historians. We're experimental archaeologists. You know, we like to actually get out there and use, use our gear. Use the gear, you, yeah. you know, wear the clothing, use the gear, use the weapons, and find out, you know, how it worked, you know, if it worked, you know. Yeah. And, and it's, I do, I, I do a little bit of everything like Eli does. I make horns, I do a little blacksmithing, leatherworking, woodworking, and you show somebody a piece that you've made, and, you know, they say, well, that's, that's pretty, you know. Well, yeah. but it's functional. You know, I yeah. don't make anything that's not functional. You know, I'm not. I, people say I'm an artist, but I, you know, I'm I'm recreating pieces to be used. You know, and that's, yeah. if a guy buys one from me, and I hope that he's using it, not hanging it on the mail. You know. Yeah. But uh, you know, this trip was for me one of the big draws was. You know, I, I was in the infantry for 22 and a half years, and we do woods trekking, hunting, things of that nature never been around the water that much you know yeah travel by water that's that's going to be interesting we're going to use gear and and, and stuff that we don't normally use yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis traveling that and, far and traveling <laughs> that far yeah and i mean we we figured we had about 250 pounds of gear in here with us and i i told him i said you know ha having been in infantry and walked miles upon miles there's no way that two guys could carry that amount of weight over land in a day, you know, they couldn't go 25 miles in a day with, right? You know, yeah, with that much so, weight. Uh, you know, seen obviously seen the advantage with that, you know, and then we also talked about the fact that it was just him and I in this canoe going down the river, how vulnerable we were out in the middle of the river. Yeah, you, know? you feel exposed. Yeah. Oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, so just it just makes you think about things and and get into their mindset a little bit if you can. Yeah. Uh, it's almost, um, in a way, it's about being a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I think. You yeah, know, it's a humbling experience. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I grew up in our um, 
family woods, we have about 150 acres that we've planted mm -hmm. and taken back. And like every now and then, it's just good to go out there and just sit in the woods for a little bit and yes. kind of see where you are in the universe. Mm -hmm. and, right. And, oh yeah. You know, because you're yeah. not <laughs> sitting in a car. You know, you feel real <laughs> safe, but you go right. out in the wild. Yeah. And you know, you feel a little bit more grounded. Yeah. That was one thing on our trip that I noticed in myself and even Jacobs a little bit is how in tune you become mm -hmm. with just like little noises here and there. I mean, you go days without seeing anybody or mm -hmm. hearing a kid scream or any music or anything, you know, and how yeah. in tune your senses get with every little sound. I mean, yeah. smells, wind. sound. Yeah. I mean, it, it, pretty we, neat. we saw several dead deer along the river from uh, disease, you know, we smelled oh, way you smelled more. Oh, a half a mile before well, you got to yeah. them. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, in day-to-day -day life, you just don't do that. Yeah, you know, but yeah. we're so far removed from that, yes. so to speak. Yep. So what got you guys, um, you said you do a lot of hunting and trekking and things, mm -hmm. and what, yeah. and you wanted to get on the water. What was kind of the next step then? Basically, it's always kind of been on my, for say, bucket list, was to go from uh, where I live to down to the Ohio. Why, I don't know, it's just one of them adventure things, mm -hmm. like whenever you're a kid, you hear about the Ohio, and. I've seen it like twice, you know, in my life or whatever, whenever I was younger. It's like, I want to come all the way down to here. Obviously being interested in history and everything. Yeah. And uh, my father got into woodworking, like hand carving bulls and such. And he, ever since then, he's kind of suggested like, let's make a canoe, let's make a canoe. Let's make... And I'm thinking, oh boy, I don't know, dad. <laughs> but, you know, cause it's a pretty good yeah. undertaking. And uh, so finally we just quit talking about it and got started on it. And uh, yeah, it, so after we made this, I'm thinking I have to incorporate it into my hobby, into my bucket list kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You so, got to do something with it if you're right. putting that much effort into exactly. it. Exactly. So we were talking to Jason a little bit, and he was a little unsure about it because, it, I mean, it's a week-long thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a something you just jump right into. It's something you think about before you mm -hmm. do. But uh, that's pretty much how my side of it come along. But, and then talking Jacobs into it. <laughs> yeah. I imagine that was kind of a, <laughs> yeah, it, part. It wasn't that hard. I was, I was apprehensive, you know. I mean, like I said, it's, it's putting yourself in a, in a situation where you're not comfortable and getting yeah. out of that comfort zone. And this was his dream, and so I got on board with it. But I said, you know, I, I've got all these years of military experience and, and planning and leading troops and stuff with it. He's, he's planning this, I'm gonna let him do that. So we kind of blocked off eight days, that was what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. If we need nine, we'll, you know, obviously we're gonna keep going and 200 miles to go, eight days, that's 25 miles a day. And I thought, well, that sounds awful ambitious, but I don't know how fast we're gonna move down the river. Right. You know, I've never done it. Yeah. Never done and it in a dugout. We today. wasn't familiar with, I mean, the Wabash River. I have never mm -hmm. spent like days out on the Wabash, yeah. and neither of us have. No, I grew it was, up. It was a I grew up 300 yards from the Wabash, but you know, we didn't really get out in boats and you know go very far on it. We'd go up and down a few miles here and there, and you know, horse around on it. But uh, you know, so. We, we got started and you know 25 miles the first day and 27 and a half the second and 24 the third day and and I said you know I, I told him that night I said you know we've proven that we can do this and, and hit our goals you know but we also wanted to do fishing and some hunting and yeah. you know keep we were trying to keep good journals both of us which we normally do on everything anyway that's awesome. And yeah. we, when we wasn't having time to do that, we were paddling from daylight till right before dark, dragging out, setting up camp, eating, going to sleep, getting up, doing it again. Yeah. You know, and I said I signed on for this. Uh, whatever you want to do, I'll do it. If you want to do 25 miles a day for the next five days, we'll do it. You know, and the heat come in. And, you know, 90 degrees. And, you know, 95 with the humidity. And yeah. uh, if we and didn't you, have a paddle in our hand, we had a canteen in our hand. Yeah, right. And it, we, we couldn't get enough water to drink, you know. And you can't get out of that heat. I mean, yeah. no. especially being on the water with it reflecting off the water yeah, and yeah. coming right back up under your hat. And, you it's know, crazy. we got rags around our neck and on yeah. top of our heads. I mean, oh, the tops of my feet <laughs> were burning, you know. Cause I didn't wear shoes for six days. There's no reason to. Right. Just climbing in and out of the canoe and the water and the mud and, you know. Yeah, yeah it's going to ruin your shoes. Drag, drag it in with you, you know. Oh, most yeah. definitely. We had sand and every crevice of 
everything. Yeah, we I mean, ate sand in every meal. In our meals. <laughs> it, it was nuts. <laughs> you wash it off in the river and think it's clean and come back up. And, <laughs> nope. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Still crunching on sand. Yeah. With every bite of bacon or whatever. Yeah. So I think I ate one thing that didn't have sand in it, but I had sand in my teeth still. So, <laughs> so I still got in there. Still got it in there. Yeah. So how far did you guys go then through the trip? We ended up like the total trip. Mm -hmm. We ended up at 115 river miles. About yep. yeah. And it was uh, up north, like up up toward us. The river was totally different. I mean, the bends were tighter, narrower, uh, narrower. Uh, the speed of the water seemed to be quicker, but I don't know if that was actually just bec because of, like, you're closer to the banks or, you know what I mean? The yeah, river being right. smaller, right. so you feel like you're actually getting somewhere. And, uh, but once we got down south, I mean, the river just, it just got wider. And it was almost, I told Jacob, it's like a love-hate relationship with it down there. Because <laughs> yeah. it's so wide and so pretty down there, the tree trees seem taller. I mm -hmm. mean, just less trash. Uh, but... It just felt like you was stopped the whole time. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of them, some of them river bends are a mile long, you know. And that was kind of one, one thing we always looked forward to was what was what's around the next bend, yeah. what's around the next bend. Well, whenever you it takes you 45 minutes to get around a bend, it's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> an hour or another, whatever. Another bend, and then yeah, you hit yeah. a five mile straightaway, and, and then you just and it's like I don't even feel like we're moving, bud. Right. You know, yeah. but wind in our face constantly yeah no. we talked about a sail but we would have been having to go up river to utilize a sail <laughs> <laughs> and the water would get choppy and then it almost got to uh, do you take the inside of the bend or do you stay in the current on the outside right. you know what i mean because the river's so wide it, it's like i don't want to paddle 100 some yards over there just to to go around right yeah. when we can just cut straight across the edge and, but we found out it was very beneficial to stay in the current and you, and we learned that pretty quick on how how to read the current you know with the bubbles in the river and just watching things but it was it was tough i mean it with this canoe it it almost want to push you out of the current really? i mean you we had to work to stay in it which is kind of weird but yeah yeah there was times we were paddling on one side both of us for what seemed like 20 30 oh, minutes just digging and yeah not, not moving into the current anymore at all. And I, I rode in the front the whole trip and uh, quickly figured out that I was probably 85% propulsion and about 15% steering because if he stopped steering in the back, it, it was all I could do to move that front end where I wanted to go. Yeah. So. I, would, I would put my paddle down, get a drink out of the canteen, put the cork back in it, set it back down, and the boat's already turned at a 45. I mean, it was just a constant, you'd think you'd, you'd just be able to float that thing, and it it didn't work that way, not in the river. <laughs> <laughs> kind of has a mind of its own. Oh, yeah, most definitely, absolutely. yeah. And that's where it comes to it, fighting to stay in the current, yeah. I mean, because it would always want to push you out. But That's awesome. It was, it was a good trip. But. Are you planning another one, or just kind of taking it easy? I bit? would like to finish next year. Yeah. I would like to go in a little cooler weather, say whatever, middle of October or something like that, put in where we took out there at Mount Carmel and finish on to uh, down to old Shawnee Town on the Ohio. Mm -hmm.